I don't usually get pissed off. Um, no, I don't. I don't, yeah. I don't know. You've been you've been mad at me before. Not well, today. I mean, that, I think everybody understands that though. Sometimes I wonder what I'm going to do because there ain't no cure for the Kirby Time Blues. <laughs> and that's how we're going to start off episode number 204 of the Promo Upfront podcast. I am one of your hosts, Bill Petrie. With me as always, let's call him the captain of clickbait, mm -hmm. the one and only Kirby Hossaman. Kirby, I believe congratulations are in order because you are now a second time grandfather. I am. And that's, that's exactly right. That's a, a big celebration around here. Um, Shay Allen was born um, just a few days ago, really. And so Quincy is now a big brother. Uh, and so, yeah, this is, that's uh, it. The, the whole idea I heard for years is like, oh, being a grandparent is the best. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think you and I talked about, it. it's like, I was like, yeah, I like kids. It'll be great. It's so sure. much better than I thought it was <laughs> going to be. And so That's awesome. that is, so it, it brings me a great deal of joy. So how are you, buddy? I'm doing great. Uh, you know, just been plugging away and mm -hmm. getting things done. It's been a little challenging here in, in mm -hmm. Tennessee the last few weekends because it's nice during the weeks and then the weekends have been <laughs> a complete washout. Right. Uh, so I've spent more time in the office kind of doing things. If anybody's watching on video, you probably notice I've made a change. I used to have the arm microphone. I have the microphone. It's just below me. I just... It was kind of getting him away, and I thought it was a need for a change. But you know what, Kirby, what's interesting about that, it got me to thinking, because honestly, we've seen a ton of changes in the promotional products industry, yeah. uh, from big distributor move to supplier consolidation. I, I don't know about you, but it's impossible to keep up with it all. And frankly, that's why I'd like to start our podcast today to really talk about something we don't talk often enough about in the industry, and that is stability. You know, with all the changes we do see on a regular basis, Kirby, it's just as important to talk about companies that are established, stable, and strong. And that's why I'm so thrilled to talk about our friends uh, at Shapenko. You know, for over 90 years and four generations of family ownership, Shapenko has genuinely cared about the success of each and every one of their clients. And that, my friend, is the mm -hmm. definition of stability, isn't it, Kirby? It really is. I mean, we've talked about it before because it is so impressive. Um, you talk about the statistics of the businesses that don't last a year, that don't last five years, that don't last 10 years. Right. And they, the fact that they've gone across generations just shows their commitment to the customer, I think. And I think that's that's what kind of creates staying power. Now, Kirby, I couldn't agree more. As usual, you said it better than I ever could have hoped to say it. Uh, you know, another point, since they only sell through promotional products distributors, Shapenko is dedicated to more, uh, doing more than just delivering quality merchandise at a fair price. They go that extra mile to ensure that every distributor project is a resounding success. So it's the right way to do business. And that is how you continue to be stable and strong heading into the next 90 years. Now, the bottom line, Shapenko has stood the test of time. The experience, the products, and the people are absolutely the best. Now head over to the newly redesigned Shapenko.com to start your next project today. You're not going to be sorry you did. Now, Kirby, I want to thank you for having the courage to podcast with me today. We don't usually know what each one is going to bring up topic-wise, if you've mm -hmm. listened to us before. Um I will say that today, I do know exactly what Kirby's going to bring up because he has the upfront section of the podcast. And so Kirby has thoughtfully, and I have responded thoughtfully, uh, as Kirby's thoughtfully asked me to step aside and let him go on a rant, and I'm going to do exactly that. So Kirby, it's your dime, it's your dance floor. Thanks, Everybody man. buckle up because <laughs> I, think it's, I, think, I think you're a little fired up today. Yeah. I, so uh, first of all, I want to thank our buddy, Danny Rosen, who texted this morning. I was actually, um, as is often the case, he texts a subject and then I'm slow to respond. You guys go back and forth. I was out on a run. And so it took me a little bit to to read this. And there was a an article in GQ, um, apparently shared by the New York Times yesterday. And I'm going to reference this article and it's going to be the last time I reference an article like this. Um, and the title of the article was called The End of Merch. 
And I just want to tell you, folks, I am tired, 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 so damn tired of these type of articles being published in major publications. Yeah. I find it deeply ironic that about once a quarter, a large magazine, you know, a dying or stagnant medium, takes a deep shot with big headlines at an industry that is thriving. You know, if I were jaded, uh, I might think they wanted to grab headlines to try and tie their media to one that's actually growing and working. I think that, you know, magazines, print, if you want to do better, look in the mirror, create better content that actually resonates with your audience and you might have a better time keeping audiences. Next, you know, I think we really do lose sight of the fact that the industry that we sell to are advertisers and our advertisers seem to be growing while yeah. theirs are disappearing. Again, maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist, which I'm not, but maybe they're just taking shots at a competitor that seem to be taking their market share. Also, I, and this is the part that I've, I do understand the irony in what I'm doing here. We need to stop giving these folks airtime. Our pals at Skewcast, Bobby and Mark and those guys, bring them on. You know, every time that, that uh, it was at Fast Company did an article or this place did an article and they do it in yeah. a thoughtful way. So Bobby, Mark, please understand what I'm saying. But you know what? Your journalistic integrity is not matched by them. They put out pieces that do not interview anybody from PPI or anybody from our industry that denigrates our industry. So yes, I see the irony that I'm talking about it now. That's what I'm saying. It's the last time I'm going to talk about one of these damn articles that says, hey, it's the end of merch, which I wasn't planning on bringing this up, but thank you so much to PPAI, who then published an article this morning saying, hey, they did an end of merch thing while advertising a bucket cap with their logo on it. Just to emphasize the amount of full of shitness this kind of crap has. And finally, you know, the authors are always talking about the lessening impact of merch because they have too, way too many shirts or whatever, which, by the way, is not that subtle of a humble brag. Look how awesome my life is. But the reality is every market, every market gets saturated or flooded with bad stuff. Magazines, for example seem to be that way right now. Articles, for example, when you can't seem to come up with a new and interesting idea. Over the past five years, readers of magazines have remained stagnant or declined. And it's funny because magazines seem to brag about that because they suck less than newspapers. Congrats. Yeah. And But the number of magazines have increased. Now, what does that tell us? You know what I think it tells me is that well-done magazines that speak to a specific audience that really understand who they're trying to communicate to, like PPAI does, like ASI does, are where we're heading, folks. You know, targeted marketing yeah. and content like branded merch. So in short, kiss my ass. I'm so tired of this type of article from mainstream media that is denigrating an, a, an industry that actually is growing. So those are my thoughts on this. Bill? Okay. Uh, I wish last time was the last time you brought this up on the podcast because I think this is such much ado about nothing. Uh, I read the article. Uh, again, thank you for Danny for sending it. I actually had seen the article a couple days ago. I got about halfway through it and then decided this is just the same type of bullshit clickbait. It was well written, uh, certainly to be clear. But it's just clickbait and it was really focused on graphic tees and how you know there was a rise of graphic tees and now it's the inevitable decline because blah 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 I, I don't see any reason to get upset about this i don't see any reason to talk about it um to be perfectly clear i i obviously have this i share the same opinion as you in terms of you know it's a dying uh a dying medium or a struggling medium maybe is a better way to put it at least i would put it that way it's a struggling medium and they're looking for readers they're looking for reactions they're looking for people to talk about it. And, and it's exactly what I said in my text to you and Danny. To me, this is the only way traditional media can really grab headlines these days is by opinion-based clickbait type articles. That's it. If there's no news here, it's one guy's opinion that, hey, I think the graphic tee uh, uh, merch trend is dying. Super. I think traditional media is struggling. Super. It's everything has now become so opinion-based. I am exhausted having to respond or feeling the obligation to respond to said opinions. 
um, especially one like this, which to me, again, clickbait, it, there's nothing to see here. There's nothing for us to debate. There's nothing for us to argue about because you and I are exactly in alignment on this. The only disagreement I have is why the hell are we talking about it on our podcast? Who cares? PPAI did a fantastic job with their rebuttal. Bobby and Mark have always done a fantastic job. I think there's been times you and I have chimed in on the promotional products page or on the Fast Company article specifically that you referenced. Uh, that was what, two, three years ago, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. We've responded thoughtfully. I don't care. And by us talking about it, we are giving this type of crap credence. That's my opinion. So I, while I agree with you, I don't see what the big hoo-ha is. To me, it's nothing to see here. No reason to get upset. Move on. And, and here's the thing. You're probably not wrong. But I would oh, also there's say- Oh, no probably about it, Kirby. Uh, it, the only thing I'd say about that is when, be, when, when you feel attacked- you do feel uh, the necessary to respond. And I think it's fascinating sure. to me is that the, you know, I, I actually compare, you know, the, I do this, I, I compare our industry to Kashokton sometimes. And I find that right. when people take shots at our community, it's always people who have just enough knowledge to feel like they have an opinion. Sure, I lived there 20 years ago, haven't been back, but I can tell you exactly how things are going. This guy right. owns a t-shirt. Right. And so he feels like he knows that he has his finger on the pulse of the trends of it. And I think that this is the kind of thing that decreases the credibility of media as it is right now. And so you're right. You're yeah. right. And it, it is it is the the idea that we do need to stop talking about it. But it did get me pissed off this morning. I, I understand. I guess the, my point is, Kirby, I don't feel attacked by this. I don't feel attacked at all. I feel like it's an uninformed opinion. And of course, yes, there are some people who aren't part of our industry who are going to read it, who are going to uh, you know, acknowledge it and so on and so forth. But again, I, I, think, I think we do ourselves and our industry a disservice when we uh, keep talking about it. Um, and, and that's what we're doing here today. But you know what? That's really okay, Kirby. That's really, really okay. Uh, I think your opinion like I said, is is 100% uh, just like my opinion. It's extremely, extremely valid. Um, and so I think I really appreciate you bringing it up, but I think we should stop talking about it. Tell you what, though, unless you have anything else you need to say. on That's this. it. You good? Yep. Okay. So, uh, you know, Homo Pulse, it's our middle of the, the podcast sponsor. They've asked ChatGPT to write some songs about uh, the, the efficacy and the value that they provide. Well, I'm going to do them one better. I have, we don't do this often. I have a special guest, Kirby, oh, that's okay. going to read the poem or the song. It is the triple fake AI Gary V. Let's hear from <laughs> Gary V. Ready? Yes. Adam's life's now all the better. Kara's reaching every trendsetter. Alicia's brand leads without strife. Paul's social media comes to life. Quotes and orders, thanks to AMP, is Terry and Linda's sales champ. Greg's audience now interacts. Man Promo Pulse's AMP impacts. Visit promopulse.io today. Wow, thank you, Gary V, for popping on the podcast with us. That was awesome. Uh, I don't think there's anything left to be said except head over to promopulse.io slash testimonials uh today all right kirby now it's my turn yeah. yeah that looks fun uh, a little palate cleanser but uh you know to close the loop on the last topic um because i was trying to coordinate a lot of technology here to get that sounding decent mm -hmm. um i think we're both in the same place it's just mm -hmm. i'm tired of talking about it and i know you are too you felt the need to i'm glad you brought it up all right kirby let's talk about international perspective perspectives about the promotional products industry. We're going hard on promo today and I like okay. it. So I had, a, uh, I was enjoying my Memorial Day weekend, as I'm sure you were. Mm -hmm. And I got an email from a, a student at Stenden University in the Netherlands mm -hmm. by the name of, of Kuhn de Vries. Um, he had, was doing research. He's on the U.S. promotional products market and asked if he would, if I would be open to inter being interviewed for a project that he's doing. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Sure. And so long story short, we went back and forth, found a time to do it on Tuesday of this week. And just to be clear, I asked him, I said, how do you, how do you even know I exist? You're right. a student in the Netherlands and I'm, you know, here in the United States, whatever. And he said, I was trying to do some research 
and I was on YouTube. So this is this is one of those um, testimonials to the e efficacy of YouTube. I was on YouTube and I stumbled across your podcast. And I really enjoy you and Kirby. In mm -hmm. fact, he said he's going to reach out to you. And I don't know if he has yet or not because he wants some different perspectives. So he may be asking, he may be reaching out to you. Cool. Um, he goes, but I really enjoy it. And I wanted to get, you know, all the other students here are trying to find local experts who might understand the U.S. market. And I thought I'd go one better and reach out to somebody in the United States. Like so it. honestly, we had a fun conversation. And, I, you know, the miracle of how the world is shrinking and technology is not lost on me. The fact that I was, you know, we we communicated 24 hours before, and then we're on a Zoom call. I can see him, he can see me, and we're interacting. And it's just, I, I love that. You know, we, yeah, we talk cool. about the negatives of technology so often. How about a positive for technology? It's really, really cool. So, anyway, I thought it would be fun if I took a few of the questions he asked and asked you, and maybe we can go back and forth on that. Are you okay, okay with that? Sure, always. Okay. So, one, here's a question he had. What are the common, and I can answer my my response first, since obviously I know what I said and, and to give you time to think. So first question was common challenges. What are the common challenges distributors face in the U.S. market? Um, and I said, well, a couple, couple things, and I'm not going to get deep into it. Um, uh, saturation, right? Mm -hmm. There's a, a 25, 26,000 distributors all selling the same products from the same suppliers, mm -hmm. basically the same audience at the same price. That's difficult standing out. Again, for the same reason, and offering more than just slapping a logo on it and getting out of that perception of that's all you do is put a logo on a product and trying to create an overall experience. I think those are the common challenges facing distributors in the U.S. market. I'd love to hear what you have to say, Kirby. Yeah, I think the, the number one thing that popped in my head was standing out. Uh, and I've heard, yeah. again, you just said it. We all sell the same product and all that sort of thing. Um mm -hmm. So standing out in a crowded marketplace is number one. Number two, I think we are in the business of keeping promises for other people. Um, and Absolutely. so understanding which supplier partners are the best fit doesn't mean they're the best at whatever, that they're the best fit for you right. and your clientele. Um, and then, you know, I think because we are in that standout marketplace, I think the third thing that pops into my head is margin, figuring out ways to um, sell at a price that actually allows you to be profitable, whether that means you add yeah. services, whether that means you stand firm on your price, whatever that is, but standing out, um, keeping promises for other people, and then maintaining profitability in such a competitive work environment. Right. No, I think I think you hit the nail on the head. I think you're 100% right in all that stuff. So okay. I, I love that, Kirby. Second question, what important trends have you noticed when it comes to competition between distributors? Hmm. And that was, that was a challenging question for me to answer on the fly, which I um, did. Yeah, um, I'll give you mine real quick. The first thing that pops into okay. my head okay. is uh, the change. You're just asking for the change in dynamic. I think the biggest thing is collaboration. Um, I yeah. think that we have historically been um, like it, it, the competition is always very important. And I think done right, it can raise our levels. But we've been so paranoid in mm -hmm. the past that we can't tell somebody yeah. who our customers are because, you know, they might know that I always joke about State Farm buying pens. Mm -hmm. um, and But I do see, even if we're not working together as much, we're seeing more masterminds yeah. together. We're seeing more mind share together. Um, and I find that to be really positive. Yeah, I, I so I I didn't answer that. That was not one of my answers. Although you're accurate yeah. because it's such a slow is molasses in the dead of winter trend. Mm -hmm. It's still a trend though, and you're 100% correct. So I don't want to crap on your point. No, I said, here's the thing. There are two types of distributors, really, if you look at the, the US market. You have your large online distributors, your four imprints of the world. Mm -hmm. And then you, and, and you could also, you know, lump maybe Halo and some of the other ones in that very large, even though they have a lot of, uh, you know, smaller individual salespeople in the organization, you have a large uh, distribution, then you have the smaller to medium sized distributors and they are compete, you know, especially when you compare foreign imprint to the small and medium sized guys, you're comparing apples in, in uh, wood chunks you'd use to smoke meat. Mm -hmm. it, there's no comparison because, and what I know you and I have preached, not only to uh, uh, ourselves, but also to our friends in the industry is, when people lament for imprint, why are you trying to compete against them? 
Yeah. They're not your competition. Yeah. It's like trying to out Amazon, Amazon. You yeah. do not have the resources. You don't have the infrastructure. Yeah. So that was one of the things. And I said, what I really focused on though, is the trend is, I think people are leaning more into the fact that this is a relationship and experiential mm. industry. Like and those two go hand in hand. So you can't, um, you can't build a relationship these days because it's so easy to go on for imprint, upload a logo, get, get my stuff. You can't create that relationship without starting to at least look at how do people experience not only the moment they receive the merchandise, but how do they experience it five weeks from now, mm -hmm. two months from now, all down the road. And so I think that's the, really the trend I'm seeing as well. So I think actually we're both correct in that. So okay. interesting, interesting perspective. Uh, last that last last question we can move on uh because i think i'm boring you after you no. get all hot and bothered about no DPR. this is good this is much more my my speed i don't usually get pissed off. um no i don't know yeah. i don't know you've been you've been mad at me before not well, today. i mean that, i think everybody understands that though well i i think <laughs> that's the thing everybody understands that's the common denominator of the entire industry everybody's pissed off at me all right kirby so in this i thought was a super interesting question and it was kind of under the guise of standing out, which you and I uh, have talked about. And actually, uh, Kuhn had had mentioned, um, he goes, I hear you guys talk a lot about how challenging it is to stand out. So he he clearly has listened to quite a few podcasts, which wow. I think that puts us up at six listeners. <laughs> Impressive. Nice. Um, he, he said, do you think there's room for more distributors? Hmm. Like, that's a question I don't ever uh, everything about now what I told him and I'll share my answer first if that's okay sure. is right now what I'm seeing in the industry and I think all of us are is such such consolidation you know mm -hmm. so much consolidation there's still no barrier to entry though if right. you have a pulse and a working credit card you can enter the promotional products industry as a distributor ASI will take your money and so will PPAI uh, they're not going to have an issue with that sure um, what I what I did say though is I think it's starting to feel like you need a reason to enter this market. You need a reason to want to, okay, I want to be a promotional products distributor. You need almost a reason to do it. Not necessarily, I've got a backlog of clients and I need to add this service. It's more of a, why, why am I doing this? What's your why? Mm -hmm. And I hope I'm hoping that is uh, what we're seeing. And so, you know, I didn't really answer the question, are there room for more distributors? I think there's more room for, thoughtful, intentional, and experiential distributors. I don't think there's room for people who are happy to slap a logo on shit and, and send yeah. it along. So this will be fairly unpopular, but yeah, I think there is. I think the market tells us. I, you know, back to the 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 one thing that Kashokton has, we don't have a lot of restaurants. You know what we have? Lots yeah. of pizza shops. And that every time uh, a new pizza shop opens up, you know, Facebook will say, we don't need another pizza shop. Yeah, but yeah. everybody's profitable. Everybody, like the market is telling us that we can withstand another pizza shop. And I think that it's probably true um, of distributors as well. I think we will continue to see an influx of, of those. And I think that just like a lot of the other businesses, people will come in, some will be amazing and do really well, and some yep. will flame out in six to nine months. So yeah, we have more room for great ones. But what I would say is when great ones come in at some point, they may push out some of the shitty ones that have been here for 10 years too. So it's like, right. No, it's something you and decides. I have talked about before. It's something you and I have talked about before that, you know, with, with, with the world shrinking technology increasing and, and people being much more discriminating about the merchandise that they do purchase on behalf of their organization. Mm -hmm. What happens to those distributors who aren't offering a more boutique style experience in terms of thinking about the big picture and not just putting a logo on things and passing it along? Sure. I think we're going to see those type of distributors kind of go by the wayside. There's always going to be small room for them somewhere. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think a few. All right. Wow. Can we talk about something fun now? Holy, <laughs> that was fun. But can we talk about something a little more lighthearted now? And by the way, last time... Kuhn, thank you. It was a lovely, lovely pleasure meeting you. Uh, and I can't wait to hear. He did say he would let me know the results of the project. So okay. I will, unlike every other tease I do for this podcast, <laughs> I'm actually going to uh, I'm actually going to share that when uh, he he shares it. But what a, what a lovely, lovely fellow over there in the Netherlands. And 
uh, a testament to, uh, you know, technology and people are really actually really nice. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually the, All right, I've had that, I've had that happen a lot lately where, you know, you hear in the media and all these places how, yeah. how the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And then you have interactions with real live humans and it's like, oh, yeah. they're pretty good. So awesome. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. That's cool. All right. Well, I don't know if this is fun, fun, but I, I thought this was really interesting. It was a headline. This was actually what my promo front was going to be <laughs> until uh, the text from this mm -hmm. morning was, I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw the the article, but SNS Activewear deploys hundreds of mm -hmm. pop pick robots at a distribution center. Um, and I, I don't have, I mean, I can read you the article. Um, I saw it from ASI is where I saw it. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting um, in sure. the, just the idea of utilizing the technology that the Amazons of the world and warehouses of the world are utilizing to be more effective, to be faster. You'll be able to, you know, run 24 hours a day. Now, I'm super curious because I think they're just implementing this technology, if I'm speaking correctly here. Um, so I'll be super curious to see how those go. I uh, My guess is they'll be rolling it out in certain areas to see how 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 um effective they can be but they i mean hundreds of robots seems like a lot and so i am fascinated when i see this kind of technology moving into this piece of our industry um so i just thought it was a really cool story i love to see that kind of investment just didn't know if you have any thoughts on it uh no i have no thoughts okay all right moving on okay. cool all right next topic no i'm kidding uh yeah no i think it's it's i think Look, it's it's when we have an organization, I do believe there's a fiduciary responsibility to try to make it as efficient as possible mm -hmm. and to uh, make it as lean as possible. Um, and that's probably not the most popular take because mm -hmm. obviously you're bringing in robots to do something that has been done traditionally by humans. Um, and I hate that part of it. You know, I, I so here's the thing. Those two can coexist. I can love the idea of an organization seeking to be more efficient and uh, uh, leaner and more profitable. I can I can love and respect that, and I do. And I can also hate the fact that it, it may impact uh, act people's lives in their livelihoods. Sure. I can also hate that. Those two can coexist, and that's exactly where I live with this. Yeah. Um, I don't want anybody's uh, livelihood to be impacted. I don't want. I don't like that at all. But by the same token that that's that's kind of how business has always been done unfortunately mm -hmm. or fortunately yeah. you know uh you know how many how many auto workers have lost their jobs throughout the 70s 80s and 90s and, and since then because of automation because you know the assembly line was built <laughs> right. for uh, robotics uh to place doors on cars and things like that and so a lot of people lost their jobs and it's not an innate human right to be employed. And again, maybe not the most popular take, but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to control, if you want to fully control destiny, start a company, mm -hmm. be an entrepreneur, do your own work. That being said, I do hate how it might impact uh, the people involved because they're probably mm -hmm. very good people. Mm -hmm. I'll be interested to see how it plays out. My, I think what I'd really be interested to see, Kirby, what is the error rate for the last three yes. years? yes. And then what's the error rate for the next three years? Or take a smaller sample size year to year. I would be very curious to see what that is. Yep. Because if for some reason the robotics that are installed at SNS are not as uh, efficient in terms of making mistakes, uh, then then you're going to have issues, right? right. I, mean, you bet, I guess you better be damn sure that this is going to improve my experience as a user before you do this type of thing, because it's a big change. It's a yeah. big change. And, in yeah. you know, as we learned with AI and any sort of robot, they are great task doers. Mm -hmm. They are not good at critical thinking yet. They're not good at saying, I know I'm supposed to put this shirt in this box, but somehow this doesn't add up. This doesn't jibe because of whatever. They don't do that yet. So mm -hmm. I, I'll be very curious to see what happens. Yeah, that's that's exactly... I guess where my head's at, and I don't know that I articulated that. I'm like the the what you said about the data is exactly yeah. where my head's at. It's like it'll be interesting because I think, yeah, it might not be as good. It might be ten times better. <laughs> so we'll it, it, yeah, you, we'll be. see. You know, know what I mean? Yeah, cool. 
All right, Kirby, I'm only going to do one more quick one very quick because it's timely. And if I don't say it today, it's a moment that's gone. Okay. All right, Kirby. Well, this week, uh, Memorial Day weekend, traditionally the Indy 500 is raced uh, okay. in, at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. IndyCar banned political branding on cars for this year's Indianapolis mm. 500. Mm. And the move came after one request made uh, uh, made to an entry for last Sunday's race that would have promoted former President Donald Trump and independent hopeful Robert Kennedy Jr. Now, I, this is not a political discussion. It's more of a giant should uh, an organization like the Indy 500 ban those types of sponsorships uh on on a, on a race car for a weekend i have thoughts but i'd love to hear yours first um yeah I, so i think i guess I'll, I'll do it from from both sides my first is the um consumer side so the consumer side when you said that they banned those political ads and you didn't mm -hmm. say the the candidate first mm -hmm. like you just said i said yeah. great awesome I'm excited that they did that because then all of a sudden it it takes away from the race and it takes away from, for me, I don't want to hear about that shit. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, right. I've already given you the philosophy that I think we should have. You already election. voted. Yeah. Two weeks the, ago. The, the voting was held two <laughs> weeks ago. That's right. I, I don't need to, I don't need to have any more ads in my that's face. Right. I'm done with this. Um, So that's the consumer side. The other side is I think it still makes sense because I think as an event, as an organization, you have the ability to um, allow certain advertisers or not allow certain advertisers. We've seen this with brands like Patagonia and Under Armour. They will not allow certain people to put their logo on their the co-brand with them. So uh, from the, the purpose of, hey, it's NASCAR's game or it's the Indy 500's game or whoever it is, and they get to make up the rules, I'm 100% comfortable with that. So I actually, uh, what I wrote down, 100%. It's a private organization. They can do what they want. They can take whatever money they want. You know, th that's their choice. And for those, and, I, and here's why I think it really was smart of them to say no. Now, if and it could have been, it could have been a political uh, advertisement for Joe Biden. Yeah, it doesn't really right. matter. I think once you accept that, you allow a team to accept that. One could make the argument you are a media outlet and therefore you must give equal time. Right. And so I think it's very smart that they. Biden doesn't matter. I think the fact that they said no makes all the sense in the world for the fact that it, it doesn't limit free speech. It's a private company that said we're not going to allow that. And if you don't like it, that's fine. You can go race somewhere else. You can go race the other Indy 500, which doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. It. Well, it, it it's it goes back to, and you know this, it's one of the reasons I really enjoy being independent. Um, and so when I create content and somebody in the industry mm -hmm. might be a, a powerful person in the industry and they don't like who I'm having on Delivering Marketing Joy, I can tell them to go pound sand because it's my show. Yep. And uh, not that that's ever happened. But um, it's I happened do, to both of us. That's yeah. the reason both of us like doing our own thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I, same thing. You know, I, we, we've had people come to us on the podcast say, man, I can't disagree more with what you said. I'm not a news outlet. We're not, we're, we're not saying this is opinion based. Back to kind of wrapping yeah. up our conversation earlier. This yeah. is an opinion based podcast, our thoughts, our beliefs. And if you don't like it, that's cool. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't, who, who agrees with everybody? So sure. anyway, but I'll tell you something everybody can agree on. And that's the fact that stability still plays such an important role in the promotional products industry, especially when you're talking about our pals over at Shipenko. Uh, that's right. They've been in business 90 years, four generation family owned business, and they only sell through promotional products distributors. That is a testament to not only stability and longevity, but also quality and care. Hard to beat that combination. So for your next writing instrument project, look, take a good look at our pals over at Shapenko and visit them at shapenko.com. You're not going to be sorry you did. I have to go, Kirby. I'd love to wrap this up a little more thoughtfully and intelligently, but I have to go cancel my my uh, a subscription to GQ based on that article. I'm I'm now upset about it. 